Hey everyone, super quick video this week, and I'm on travel next week, so there may not be a video next week, but the Open EVSC review should be coming up shortly after I get back. Anyways, you may have heard Elon was tweeting again over the weekend, and we finally got our first look at the specs and pricing for the dual motor all-wheel drive Model 3 and the Performance Model 3. Dual motor and performance options were also made available in the Model 3 configurator for some reservation holders, though the rollout of access to those options, um, has been interesting, but I'll talk about that in, the, in, in a bit. But first, let's talk about those specs. According to Elon's tweets, the long-range dual motor Model 3 will have a 0 to 60 time of 4.5 seconds, a 310 mile EPA range, and it'll be a $5,000 option. The Performance Model 3, on the other hand, will have a 0 to 60 time of 3.5 seconds, an EPA range of 310 miles, and uh, a base price of $78,000. Now for $78,000, I'm sure you're wondering what that gets you. And there are some questions about, well, what that gets you. But here's what we know according to Elon's tweets, which is that the Performance Model 3 comes with, well, pretty much all of the Model 3's options. It includes paint, it includes the premium upgrades package, um, it includes 20-inch sport wheels with performance tires, um, and it has a spoiler. Autopilot, however, isn't included in that $78,000 price, so if that's something you want, well, Enhanced Autopilot will cost you an extra $5,000, and the full self-driving package, which currently doesn't do anything, will add another $3,000. On a related note, if you want to learn more about Autopilot, its capabilities, limitations, and your role as the driver, uh, check out my previous video about, well, Autopilot. Link's in the description below. In addition, 18-inch aero wheels appear to be a no-cost option for the Performance Model 3, but at least at present, it doesn't seem to reduce the cost of the car by selecting the 18-inch aero wheels, and there's no word on what tires are coming on those aero wheels. I bring up tires because the 20-inch sport wheels appear to come with Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires, and, well, stock, the 18-inch aeros, come with Michelin MXM4s, which are uh, an all-season, kind of eco, low-rolling-resistance-focused tire. But I checked Tire Rack, and the Michelin Pilot Sport 4S is available in the correct size for the 18-inch aeros, and a version of the Model 3 manual that I downloaded includes Michelin Pilot Sport 4s as an OEM option for the 18-inch aero wheels. So maybe they'll come with sporty tires with the performance car? Who knows? Perhaps even more interesting than just the specs of these two new Model 3 configurations was this tweet from Elon claiming that the performance version of the Model 3 would be 15% quicker than the BMW M3, that it would handle better than the BMW M3, and that the performance version of the Model 3 would beat any car in its class on the track. On the track. In case you aren't familiar, that's a really big claim to be making, because the BMW M3 has enjoyed the spot as, well, the benchmark for performance sedans for decades. And claim of better handling aside, Elon didn't provide any context around that 15% quicker number. You know, is that 0 to 60? Is that uh, corner exit speeds or lap times or eighth mile, quarter mile? What, what are we actually talking about here that is 15% better? Because if you look at just 0 to 60 based on the numbers from BMW, the performance version of the Model 3 is either, what, like 11% or 17% quicker, depending on the configuration of the M3 you're looking at. So, well, neither of those is 15. I don't know. We'll have to wait for some context on that one. These are especially interesting claims, given that Tesla has never really made cars geared toward exceptional handling, and no additional details were given regarding differences in suspension versus stock for the performance car. So, where they're getting the improved performance, aside from just more power, um, don't know yet. Okay, okay, Tesla did make the Model S P85 Plus, and as I recall, some of the very, very early P85Ds inherited some of the suspension parts from the P85 Plus, and, and those two cars are probably as close as Tesla's come to making handling-oriented cars, but I'd argue that both of them didn't go far enough. And, and don't even get me started about the original Roadster. That stuff aside, the other big news was that the white interior is finally available, but only for the performance version of the Model 3. The non-performance cars will get the white interior at some point in the future. So let's talk about range. You're probably wondering why all three of the long-range versions of the Model 3, the long-range rear-wheel drive, long-range all-wheel drive, and performance model, all have the same EPA-rated range of 310 miles. 
Well, I don't have any official information about that, but I have some ideas. Keep in mind, this is speculation. Based on Elon's tweets, it seems safe to assume that all three versions of the car are using essentially the same permanent magnet switch reluctance motor in the rear as the primary drive unit. The all-wheel drive cars get an induction motor in the front to drive the front wheels. When you aren't demanding high levels of performance from the all-wheel drive cars, I'm guessing that they're probably torque sleeping that front induction motor, since outside of its very narrow peak efficiency, it's probably not gonna be anywhere near as efficient as the rear drive unit. So it's likely gonna be using that rear drive unit as the primary, unless, like I said, you either demand performance from the car or for whatever reason, traction control needs more power to the front. If that's the case, then I would expect the EPA ratings to be about the same because inside of the test parameters for that EPA range testing, just the rear drive unit would be doing anything. You can probably think of this like the old rear wheel drive Model S85 and the Model S P85. They both used essentially the same rear drive unit, had the same EPA range rating, it's just that the P85 put down a lot more power. However, inside of the confines of EPA testing, you aren't going to be requesting that level of power from the rear drive unit, so you'd get about the same range. Obviously, in the case of the Model 3, we're still dealing with some extra weight up front due to the added motor and some extra rolling resistance because, you know, if there's a differential up there, it's driving more stuff than it would be in just the rear-wheel drive model of the car. But those are really tiny factors in the grand scheme of EPA range testing. So, I don't know, they could be pretty much the same, unlike the dual motor Model S, because remember, it's using an induction motor in the front and the back, and the induction motors that they're using have very narrow peak efficiency bands. And so, you know, you gear those motors differently, you ping back and forth between them to try to get both of them as close to those efficiency, those narrow peak efficiency bands as possible. Because outside of those peak efficiency bands, those induction motors, um, the efficiency falls off really quickly. Whereas in the Model 3, with the permanent magnet switch reluctance motor in the back, that should have a much broader uh, high efficiency band. We technical stuff, people just want to know when they can buy it. Yeah, well, some people might not like the answer to that one, because there are quite a few questions. A bunch of people got access to the configurator with the new options, but then that access got pulled back, or they were able to go through the process and hit the order button, and then it errored out, and they lost access to those options. It, it, was a, it was a bit of a mess for a while. People have been calling Tesla to try to get more information about how to configure the dual motor and the performance cars, and it, it sounds like Tesla may be changing things up at this point based on uh, some revisions to verbiage on the website and things that people are being told on the phone, um, it, it seems like Tesla is going back to the order in which people reserve is the order in which they will be invited to configure the dual motor or performance cars. If you already have an open invitation for a first production rear wheel drive car, um, that doesn't seem to actually get you access to the dual motor car or the performance car. You kind of have to wait for a second invitation of sorts, and again, from what people have been told by Tesla, it sounds like the owner priority no longer really applies in this case. Uh, so, yeah. Uncertainty is fun, isn't it? Interestingly, at least based on what I'm seeing in the forums, it appears that no one, or almost no one, outside of the east coast of the United States has been able to successfully order a dual motor or performance version of the Model 3 so far. And despite Tesla's talk about the reservation order being the order that they're inviting people, there seems to be reports of, well, the usual chaos on that front. You've got people who are line waiters complaining that online uh, uh, reservationists got to ac get access to the new features in the configurator before they did, and it... Um... Interesting thing about doing East Coast invites first, however, is maybe this is Tesla trying to maximize its Q3 deliveries, because it takes time for them to ship cars from the West Coast to the East Coast that's primarily done by rail. So if you get the East Coast reservation holders to order first, then you start building those cars. Then you open it up to you know, the middle of the country and the West Coast, and then by the time the East Coast cars are done, they're on the rails, they're on their way out, you start building the West Coast cars, and then you deliver all of them before the end of a quarter. Anyway, I'd love to show you guys the configurator, but I don't have access to the new options yet either. So with that, I will bid you adieu for a week or so. Uh, if you have any questions or whatever, go ahead and post those in the comments below as usual. Don't forget to rate and subscribe, and I'll see you later.